linear transformation is today. Do not write this down. I repeat, do not write this down. What, what this is, what is a linear transformation? So basically linear transformations are our introduction to what's called a vector. And it knows what a vector is. Oh, is it the thingy that, um, I, I, we learned in physics, it's like the arrow thingy. Uh -huh, the it's, arrow thingy. Uh, it's telling you which direction it's moving. And what? And there's two pieces. Which direction it's moving and there's two pieces to a vector. Direction and starts with the M. Movement. Magnitude. Oh, okay. Uh, direction and magnitude, right? So we're going, we're telling you the direction, we're telling you, telling you the speed and all the angle that we're heading in, right? Direction and magnitude. How many of you have ever seen the minions? You know, vector? Yeah. And he says, you know, he's the villain. <laughs> he's the villain with direction and magnitude. Okay. Um, so what what I'm giving you this is that linear transformations are when you're in the format of ax plus by comma cx plus dy. Okay, you're not in slope intercept. It's literally in standard quote unquote ax plus by form. Okay, um, and the benefit of this is that if you are you're combining your simple geometric processes, the only difference is that it doesn't involve translation. Okay, you're stretching, shrinking, which is your dilation. Um, and you're shearing and projecting, which is reflection, okay? But the key thing here is that it's all around the origin, which is why translation doesn't count because translations aren't around the origin, right? Translations are just moving all willy-nilly, left, right, up, down. I'm pretty sure the learning is taking place up front, up here with the teacher. Yeah, hey. Hey, girl, hey, I'm up here. Um, where is this beneficial? How many of y'all ever played a computer game? A video game. Okay. That is all linear programming. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Any any general game. Computer graphics are all based off of linear transformations for the most part. That's how we create our three-dimensional and two-dimensional computer screens. Okay. Um, we are talking about how the angles of it looks, the projections, the rotations. And notice there's still some limit mobility in your pieces, right? Um, you can't just make them do everything necessarily, but they do have a algorithm that has them moving with direction and magnitude, right? And so that's where linear um, transformation is really beneficial in the real world. Um, so motion effects, a uh, simple example is when you're shrinking an object. So when something, think about, oh no, Mario, when he hits the little um, plant and he grows, or when he hits something and it shrinks them, if you ever played Super Mario, the actual like Nintendo game. Um, he hits the flower, he grows, he gets knocked down, he shrinks back down, right? That is a simple linear transformation that's taking place, okay? Um, and then also robotics is a big part. So controlling robotics, telling that robot um, where to go, when to go, how fast, what direction, what angle, right? That's all linear programming. So if you have any, any interest in those careers, fields, um, you will be doing linear algebra and linear transformation as part of your career. So if you're into computer graphics, computer designing, robotics, uh, that those these are going to be key aspects of your future. Okay. Um. So, what is our prayer model for for us to learn about vocabulary? Right. So our vocabulary for today is linear transformation, and we're going to fill in our prayer model. So first, we're going to talk about the coordinate function representation. What does that look like? So yesterday we reviewed coordinate function. Um, representations of our four basics, right? Rotation, reflection, translation, and dilation. We talked about those, yes? Okay, now we're gonna talk about in terms of a linear Frayer model. I mean, in terms of a linear transformation using our Frayer model. When you have a linear transformation, it's a combination of multiple geometric transformations. The key thing is that they're all centered around the origin. Nope. 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 I don't know if you heard when I gave the speech in the beginning. I spent all last night grading and updating instead of doing that. Thanks. All right. So again, the format is AX plus BY comma CX plus DY. This should be familiar to our standard form for our linear equations, right? Um, that's what you're looking at, okay? Now, the characteristics. So our characteristics are 
It's origin maps to the origin. It is all centered around the origin. There's an origin for everything. And lines map to lines. A line isn't going to turn into a curve. A line isn't going to turn into a squiggle. A line is going to stay a line. Okay. Are we good with characteristics? All right, so we're going to go down to our examples. So now with our examples. So these are our examples of linear transformation. So our examples are, notice how we have transformation of x and y equals 3y comma 2x minus y. Even though this appears that it's not in the, in the AX plus BY form, it technically is. It's just that you have 0X plus 3Y. Does that make sense? So it's still in the format of AX plus BY. Okay. This is also in the form of AX plus BY. It's just that it's 2X plus negative Y. And remember, mathematicians, we are not lazy, but we like to be efficient. And is it necessary for me to write an extra character? No. So that plus became a minus instead of me writing plus a negative. Okay. It's rotation is about the origin. So in terms of your geometric, of your geometric transformations, these three types are linear transformations. Okay. These three types are linear transformations, and that's because they're centered around the origin. So you have rotations about the origin, our 90, our 270, our 180, right? Counterclockwise or clockwise. Our dilations about the origin. So we're not sh moving it, we're just shrinking and expanding, right? Shrinking and expanding around the origin. And our reflections across the y equals x, that's because y equals x goes through the origin, right? Is that imagine imaginary diagonal that goes through. So anything, any of these geometrics are our, so again, these are our geometrics transformations. And there are geometric transformations that are also linear transformations. Got it? So let's talk about non-examples. <clears throat> So non-examples are transformation of xy equaling x squared. Is that in the format of ax plus by? No. Okay. 3x plus 4. Is that in the format of ax plus by? No. That's in mx plus b form, right? That's in our slope intercept. And is our form slope intercept? No. Okay. Translations. That's our left, right, up, down. Any translation, those are just geometric transformations, not a linear transformation. And anytime you reflect across anything other than y equals x. Okay, so I hope you're noticing here that this section isn't a whole lot of math calculations, right? It's about making connections between vocabulary and um, descriptions, that's where we're at. All right, can I zoom out? We're good. Back to one. Okay. All right, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to use your Freyer model and your knowledge of what we just talked about, and we're going to do a little bit of a discovery activity, okay? Um, so what you have here is you have transformations given below, and you're going to select... Um, four of them that you think are linear examples of linear transformations, okay? You're gonna select how many of them? Four. four of them. And you're gonna make predictions of what it's gonna look like when you transform, okay? If you wanna number them and select them, so for example, if I wanna say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna number them and I'm gonna say, okay, I think number one is a linear transformation. Okay, regardless of if I'm right or wrong, right? I'm just going to say, I think number one is a linear transformation. And my prediction is that it's going to make my A. So looking at this point, we're at, what point is that? One, two? 
And it says one, two. So my new point is going to be at um, two squared is four. And then I'm going to plug in one, two times, two times one is two, two plus three is five. So it's going to be at four, five. So I know it's going to be somewhere over here and it's going to be five. So I think it's just going to turn my A on its side. Does that make sense? That's me making a prediction of what is going to happen to my A. So that's my thought. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to test it out. So I'm going to click on. Well, you're gonna type in. Please type it exactly how it's written, okay? If you don't type it exactly how it's written, it will not take you there. But I saved myself and I'm gonna click on the link. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna type in what it said. So we had, notice how all I'm doing is deleting what's inside the parentheses. Do not delete the box, okay? Only delete what's inside the parentheses. So I'm writing Y squared, what was it? Two X plus three? Yeah. yeah plus three, okay? And I wanna test my prediction, was I correct? So I'm gonna hit click here for transformation. I zoom out, okay. I was right about where my A was, right? Yes, but is it linear? No, no. it created a what? A curve, there's a curve that was created, right? So when I come over here to my assignment, I'm all right, I was kind of right. I did okay about where it would be, however, I noticed that it created a curve from that point. So it, I'm gonna draw out the curve, pretend that that's the best it's gonna do. What do I notice? Well, I noticed that because there's a Y squared, there was a curve created. My position was correct, right? I had the right position, but the shape ultimately changed. Does that make sense? All right, so this lets me know that this is not a linear transformation, not a linear transformation, okay? Do you get what you're doing with the discovery activity? Uh, yes, okay, so you're gonna choose out of the eight, which four you think are, are your most linear just from looking at it. You're gonna make a prediction of the sketch and then you're gonna actually go through and find the sketch, cool? All right, and then we will check back. I'm gonna say, it's 9.47, let's check back at 9.55, cool? All right, good. Mm -hmm. You're just putting what's inside. Okay, so just making sure we're all understanding what's happening. You are selecting points. Um, these are your pre-image points, right? Mm -hmm. So yesterday we did pre-image to image, correct? Mm -hmm. And we used transformation rules, correct? For geometric, now we're talking about trying to find linear transformations, okay? So I have my pre-image, and now I'm going to say, okay, I think two. So I'm going to go with two. Well, the rule for two is it's x squared plus y squared comma 3x. These are my three points that I'm transforming. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So my first one is one, two. So mathematically in my head, I have that x is one, y is two, and I'm plugging them into this rule. So if I have T of one comma two, and again, I'm using this one, it's gonna equal X squared, which is one squared plus Y squared, which is two squared comma three times X, which is one. Where is this point gonna lie? So this point lies at one squared plus two squared, which is five comma three. Does that make sense? So that's where the tip of my A is going to be is at 5, 3. So when I'm sketching this, I'm going to go to 5, going to go up to 3 roughly and say, okay, that's where the tip of my A is going to be. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to do the same for 0, 0. If I have 0, 0 and I plug it in here, 0 squared plus 0 squared is 0. 3 times 0 is zero. So I know that this is still at the origin. Does that make sense? Okay. Next, I have three, I'm sorry, I have two zero. Now I'm going to plug in two. Two squared is four. Zero squared is zero. So four plus zero is four. Three times four is 12. 12. So now my point is at four, 
12, which is, I'm going to put somewhere out here in space, right? Now, the real question is, how are these points connected, right? How am I getting from here to here? Well, I have x squared plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared, if I think about geometry, that's part of a circle, right? Is that going to be a straight line connecting these two points? Or is it, that's good. this is going to be a straight line? Well, if my prediction is a straight line, then I draw it. It's a prediction. It is okay if your prediction is wrong. Does that make sense? So I'm going to say, no, I think it's going to be like a circle out. And then it's going to be another one. And then these are going to somehow connect, and my A is going to look like that. And then I actually go do it. So then I'm actually going to go here. I'm going to go to X squared. Again, you are deleting this out. You're not adding anything else. You're deleting. So I'm going to x squared plus y squared. And I, what was it? Comma 3x. Okay, that's the transformation. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to zoom out. Okay. I wasn't half wrong. I curved the wrong way, but I was right. There had to be some type of curve because of the quadratic, the parabola. Do we see that? So now you're writing your, what do you notice? What do you see is happening? Is that linear? Is it not linear? There's no linear aspects to this function or this transformation. Okay, that's what you're doing. Well, that's what you're supposed to be doing. All right, yes. All right, that's what we were doing there, cool. And again, it's just a discovery activity. It's a brain break uh, saying, okay, let me process what's happening. What do I see? What am I sketching? You're not having to do anything, but the main thing is that you're understanding that these three points are my pre-image. And I am manipulating those based on what I select from group A and group B. Yes? Okay, hold on. All right. All right. So that is what we're doing in part two. Now I'm going to stop part two.